a rumor anymore. For real this time, Chan Gailey is no longer the offensive coordinator of the Miami Dolphins. Some might find this to be a bit surprising because Stone Cold Brian Flores said yesterday that all his assistants were going to be coming back. I'm really not. Gailey is 68 years old and with everything going with the pandemic and the fact that he's 68 years old, him looking not to work anymore seems like a decent idea. Nothing personal against 4chan. He did an admiral job. It's not easy coming to a team for the first time, not being able to have a real training camp or a preseason, and having to build an offense catered to a rookie quarterback. It certainly appeared that he had a different mentality when calling plays depending on if it was Fitzpatrick or Tua. I understand why he thought that, but you'd think he would have figured out that it was going to leave after this year then you might as well empty the kitchen sink in Tua's last few games. He didn't and it's one of the reasons why the Dolphins finished with the 22nd ranked defense. 22nd ranked defense. Have a nice life, Chan. Now, the Dolphins are in search of a new offensive coordinator. If you think you've heard that before it's because you have. Personally, I'm not a big dark arts kind of guy unless we're talking about Papa Shango, but the fact remains, being the Dolphins offensive coordinator is like being the drummer for Spinal Tap. Still, though the position needs to be filled. But by who? Well, it has to be a person who can get the most out of the only guy on the team who has been guaranteed a starting spot next year, Tua Tungavailoa. I'm talking to you Xavier Howard, your spot isn't written in stone. This isn't my take, and I'm sure you've probably have heard it on the Worldwide Leader or one of the shows, but the Dolphins should be looking to design an offense sort of in the same realm, maybe I am a dark arts guy, as Drew Brees. From the skills side of it, it's a decent comparison. Short, good arm not out of this world, accurate, anticipates well, and throws on time. That's Tua, feel free to take away a skill, but those are his attributes. Deal with it. The candidates list I have compiled is not in honor. I thought it'd be dumb to do a ranking because I really have no idea who is better than the other at coordinating. If you think you know that answer, I'm going to tell you you don't. Also, I couldn't think of a fifth candidate to make this a classic top five list and I didn't want to think about the possibility of Doug Maroney in Miami. Here's the list. Eric Studsville. Besides having a name that it's really cool to say, Eric Studsville has been since 2018. That means that he was able to survive the Adam Gase regime. If you think about it, surviving that is the equivalent to surviving Chernobyl just with more headaches, if you could believe it. Stud is the team's running backs coach. His biggest track to being the offensive coordinator is being Brian Flores' guy who talks shop with. Here's what Flores said about his guy, yeah, Eric's phenomenal, Flores said. I think he's a phenomenal coach. He's a phenomenal teacher, communicator. He's someone I've leaned on in different situations over the last 18 months since I've been here. Obviously he was here before I was here and we kept him on the staff. Just as far as the lay of the land here in Miami, he's been someone that I've been able to lean on. I think he's a great coach. I think he's got a coordinator and head coaching future. I think the players gravitate to him. They he's a very, very good coach. Still though, I'd be surprised if Flores promotes his main guy. I think he's good where he's at. I'm sure the stud would say otherwise, but he's biased towards himself I imagine. George Godsey. Another coach on the staff that has a really cool part of his name. First stud and now God. Goes without saying but we all know that the Almighty is eye candy so you could say that Studsville and Godsey are the same person. Godsey is the tight ends coach for the Dolphins but more importantly, he was Chan Gailey's liaison to the surface while Chan sat perched up in the rafters like Sting. What Godsey has going for him is when quarterback's coach, Randy Brown, not a very exciting name, was out for a few weeks due to COVID, Godsey was the one that became Tua's right-hand man. Godsey did such a nice job that even when Brown came back, Godsey was still in Tua's ear on the sideline. Something to think about. Anthony Lynn Lynn is a guy that I don't believe has any ties to Brian Flores. Has any ties to Brian Flores. At least I couldn't find any. He just got canned as being the Chargers head coach after going 7-9. He probably would still be the head coach there if knew how to manage a game when it mattered. That's not his strong suit. Offense is his strong suit. It should be. He's a former NFL running back. Two years ago, Lynn went 12-4 with the Chargers and won a playoff game. His team was decent but was never a real threat to do anything. That being said his offense was ranked 7th best that year.
The smartest thing Lynn did this year was stabbing Tyrod Taylor in the lung thus thrusting Justin Herbert into the lineup. I know we don't like to say the J word around these parts, but he played fantastically. Part of that was the tutelage of Anthony Lynn. Bill O'Brien I mean, how full circle would it be if O'Brien ended up in Miami? After being responsible for the Dolphins to have all of the Texans' picks in this year's draft thus relegating Houston to, Chern to Chernobyl, that's two Chernobyl references if you're keeping score at home, to end up going to the team he traded all those picks to. It's a double cross we haven't seen since Mike Tyson knocked out Shawn Michaels. Let me just say, that I wouldn't want to see Bill O'Brien have anything to do with picking players, signing free agents, ordering takeout. Nothing like that. I do like him as an offensive coach. I remember what he did at PSU years ago and it was nothing short of miraculous what he did given his circumstance. My only issue with him has would players turn against him, instantly, if he did something he didn't like. It's possible that could happen due to his perception of not being a player's coach. You'd like to think that whoever Flores brings in would have the attention of his players or else get stone cold stunned out of existence. You also can't dismiss Brian Flores' familiarity with working with O'Brien. These guys worked together in New England once upon a time. Mike Shula. Shula has served in assistant coaching positions in the NFL, twice with the Miami Dolphins, two plus stints with the Chicago Bears and the Buccaneers, where he was offensive coordinator from 1996 to 1999. As offensive coordinator under Tony Dungy with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the team enjoyed success and narrowly missed the Super Bowl after losing the NFC Championship game against eventual Super Bowl champion St. Louis Rams. Following that 1999 NFC Championship game, he was fired as offensive coordinator after the Bucs finished no higher than 22nd in total offense during his tenure. After his firing from Tampa, Shula went on to be the quarterback's coach of the Miami Dolphins from 2000 to 2002, then left to become the head coach of the University of Alabama football team. On January 16, 2007 the Miami Herald reported that Shula was a candidate to become the next head coach of the Miami Dolphins. At that point he'd already had two interviews for the job, 11, 12, if the job had gone to Shula, he would have obtained the job Nick Saban, the coach who took over at Alabama, had vacated. However, on January 19, 2007, the Miami Dolphins announced that Cam Cameron, then offensive coordinator of the San Diego Chargers, had been appointed to the job. Ultimately, there's only one thing I know for sure. No matter what if anyone on this list ends up being the new Miami Dolphins coordinator, there's a 75% chance of them being bald. Last things as usual, I spend 5 hours to give my opinion in the video, but you can do it in just 5 seconds. Let me know your thoughts by commenting below. I always appreciate your opinion, even when you say I'm bad. Talk it 10 times and in 100 different videos. We all deserve our own voice.